If you're curious to hear a little music from our guest Carla Lucero, who we spoke to in our most recent episode, check out E4TT's annual concert of music by women and non-binary composers, Midnight Serenades, on January 25th. Welcome to For Good Measure, an interview series celebrating diverse composers and other creative artists sponsored by a grant from the California Arts Council. I'm Nanette McGinnis, Artistic Executive Director of Ensemble for These Times. Today we continue our interview with E4TT Audiovisual Project Specialist and For Good Measure co-producer and audio engineer extraordinaire, Stephanie M. Newman. We've kind of been talking about audio and gear and video, but in terms of music itself, who are your major influences? Do you have any mentors? Well, some of the people brought up a few already. Mm-hmm. But the one person that sparked my whole interest in playing saxophone and continuing was my fifth grade teacher, Katie Pinnell. And she's still wondering, I think, what I'm doing these <laughs> days and would love for me to send her more things. <laughs> um, but she was super positive and I really thrive in that positive environment and that that supportive environment. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I think that just like ingrained in me that, oh, I'm good at saxophone. I enjoy this and I'm going to keep going. And she was very bubbly, very happy. And it was really a, a lovely presence to have throughout my grade school years. And Nice. The other, Seth Cluett, I can't thank him enough for putting me in this path of, you know, ex- experimental music because I, I never really knew what that was. Two years at Miami. What timing? Yeah. Fate <laughs> or synergy, yeah. however, pick yeah. the word. Yeah. 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 Um, and he's friends or knew Zanna Parkins who taught at Mills and... Um, well, now I'm working with Gabriela Elena Frank, and I really love what she's doing for composers, her academy, giving opportunities to composers to work with performers. I'm recording audio and video and putting that all together for them and kind of being a part of that, meeting more people, meeting more performers and musicians. She's a huge inspiration. And Nanette McGinnis <laughs> as well. I'm so glad that I've gotten a lot of opportunities as I talked about. And I think my video skills have thrown because you've given me these opportunities to really like work on my craft as that and also compose because I've written music for E4TT as well, the Hydrocosmic Echoes. So right. um, giving me that opportunity and just being around um, other musicians too, such a big influence for me as a composer, musician, and um, definitely love being in the world. Well, thank you. Of music. What are you listening to or what do you like to listen to? What do I like to listen to? That's a great question. I, <laughs> I listen to so many different types of music. Um, I think that I end up, uh, depending on what I am feeling or doing at the moment, can definitely change that. I think I mentioned, which I actually haven't listened to her in a while, but like uh, Regina Spector, which Mm -hmm. would be another music influence as a singer-songwriter, because Mm -hmm. that really sparked that creativity. Her and um, Kate Nash are two indie pop singers that I were like, what are they doing? I haven't listened to them in a while, but now I kind of want to because (laughs) I'm talking about it. Um, You know, I did a lot of deep listening when I was at Mills College, too. Another thing that I will take from that experience. And now I've been diving more into um, singing bowls. Oh, yes. The Tibetan singing bowls. I know what you mean. Yeah. um, And when I'm feeling anxious I've been trying to put on that so I've been listening to some of that type of music lately Mm -hmm. too which Mm -hmm. really actually relates to everything else that I'm interested in as well it's kind of funny because I I play classical saxophone but 
I never really liked listening to other <laughs> classical saxophonists. I mean, I listened to my professors and other saxophonists like live and everything and what they do, but I wasn't one of those people who wanted to listen to other hmm. people that did the same thing as me. For some reason, I just kind of kept that out of what I was doing. And I created the sound that I really love for myself as a saxophonist. For those out there listening, can you... Circle back and talk about what you mean by deep listening. Not everybody might know what that means. It's just being more aware of the sound that you're listening to and really just listening, tuning in. Sometimes you're also producing sound, you know, with that. But I guess in my sense, I am meaning, which is what I do with the electroacoustic stuff, you know, yeah, yeah. too. But for me, I like to go on a walk and do kind of a listening walk mm. sometimes and just listen to all of the sounds that you're hearing. And you just take a second to hear there's a lot going on. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it can kind of get you out of your mind and all those thoughts that you're having and just really center you, which is why I've been revisiting some of that myself and just trying to kind of you know, relax, de-stress, <laughs> get all wrapped up with everything going on. And sometimes you just need a moment. And so just being in a sound is really relaxing to me. Listening as a meditational practice. Yeah. That's yeah. And I think I'm really drawn to it. And so we'll see where I go with it. <laughs> yeah, it can, it can be really powerful. It's true. Because mm -hmm. we tune out so much. We have to. Yeah. Do you have any advice for younger or aspiring composers and musicians? I think the advice that I wanted to give myself when I was a young musician is that it's okay to not be perfect. No one is perfect. And you hear that and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. But, <laughs> but it's really true. <laughs> but it, it is true. And there are situations, unfortunately, which... I, I talked about how the competitiveness and there are some really intense directors and mm -hmm. and I see some negative influences in music that probably stunted my relationship but th when that was happening um, and so that's not all music is and it's not what it should be about and then also just um, there's so many different types of music just because you're not really interested in one, there might be something else you really like <laughs> <laughs> or get interested in. And I know that I've seen kids who get, people who get frustrated, but maybe giving other options in music, like maybe the free improvisation to some younger kids who are just stuck in trying to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Maybe that could be for them too. It really seems like for you, improvisation acted as an antidote to the stifling effect of perfectionism on your creativity and success. And that when you had that in your tool chest, all of a sudden the worlds open up to you again. Yeah. And now when I am playing classical music, I think I'm just less hard on myself for sure. I mean, yes, getting older helps with that too. <laughs> So what's next for you? Do you have performances planned for the coming year? Compositions, future aspirations? We've talked about it a little bit. Yeah. So I'll start with my group, which I kind of talked about. We have a performance set for May 22nd of 2024 in Santa Clara. So we'll be performing there. And then that weekend after we'll be in Berkeley performing our show. and. It's called Transit Futures. It's about different types of transportation, past, current, future. So we're just in the beginning of that, working with a visual artist and um, he's putting together a video. So it's, it'll be a big event and all three of us uh, in the trio will be writing and performing it. That sounds very cool. Is that going to be down in the Bay Area? Yes, yes. Um, All right. Well, we'll have to keep an eye out for that. <laughs> it sounds fascinating. Yeah. And then I guess right now, and I 
talked about it a little bit. I'm trying to kind of build my repertoire, get back into a rehearsal schedule and figure out how to practice everything again with all of the instruments I have and how do <laughs> I uh, how do I meld like my worlds and create a solo performance for myself. So I've been revisiting things that I used to write and trying to figure that out for myself. And um, I have a couple of ideas, personal projects that I want to realize. And so I'm sure they will be happening at some point soon. I wear a lot of hats and you do, and you wear them very well. <laughs> I like them all. It's always hard to figure out what I should be doing. And also not uh, not running myself into the ground with too many, too many things, <laughs> you know, uh, making sure I'm staying healthy. Some more advice for others is you have to keep yourself healthy, you know, give yourself time to relax. <laughs> yeah, think and yeah. sleep and eat. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview, Stephanie. This was wonderful talking to you about all the different aspects of your life. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for listening to For Good Measure. And a special thank you to our guest, Stephanie M. Newman, for joining us today. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to our podcast by clicking on the subscribe button and support us by sharing it with your friends posting about it on social media, and leaving us a rating and a review. To learn more about E4TT, our concert season online and in the Bay Area, or to make a tax-deductible donation, please visit us at www.e4tt.org. This podcast is made possible in part by a grant from the California Arts Council and generous donors like you. Four Good Measures produced by Nanette McGinnis and Ensemble for These Times and designed by Brennan Stokes, with special thanks to co-producer and audio engineer Stephanie M. Newman. Remember to keep supporting equity in the arts and tune in next week for Good Measure.